Hello everyone and welcome back to Lakewood International. This episode is going to be a continuation of last episode where we completed the basic layout of our airport. We got our runways, aircraft stand, and some decorative hangars around the outside edge, uh, but that last episode was running a little bit long, coming in at just over an hour in the end. So today we're going to be getting to those last few details needed to finish everything up. The first thing that we're going to get to because it's been bugging me ever since it happened, as I'm sure it was bugging many of you, is this shoreline right here. I still think it was a good choice that we left it until the very end. Uh, there's really not much point in us fixing something only to maybe have to fix it again. But now that we have our airport layout complete, we're not going to be expanding anymore. Uh, we can finally get to fixing the shoreline. Now, I'm not really sure why the airport district tool does this. Uh, maybe they weren't expecting people to put an airport along the shore. Um, lack of testing. Maybe they didn't know how to fix it. Uh, who knows? But regardless, uh, we're going to be able to fix it pretty easily with our landscaping tools. Starting with the level terrain tool, we're going to set our terrain height to the same height as the airport and then just run this along the shore. It's going to smooth out the shoreline. It's going to take out those little jagged bits. We're going to also do a little bit of erosion control along the shoreline here. In real life, the wave action, the waves kind of banging up against the shore would over time erode the shore, and we don't want to have that. Uh, we don't want to have any sort of slope failure and having bits of our runway falling into the ocean. So we're going to create a little bit of a buffer zone going along here uh, so that we have a little bit of protection from the waves. I'm going to bring that all the way along here and then a little bit further towards our cargo harbor. Now we could leave it just like that as it is. It, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It looks pretty decent. There's definitely no more jagged bits along here, uh, but we're gonna do one last step back in our landscaping tools. We're gonna go back to uh, the soften terrain tool and we're just gonna run that along the edge here and just soften everything up, just smooth it out a little bit. I'm gonna kind of go up and down along the slope and then I think that'll make it look a little bit more realistic, kind of blend it in a little bit better with the with the ocean and the terrain above. Just go along here like this, kind of smooth everything out and connect everything together. Now this uh, this shoreline here is is too tall for any of these keys. So along our cargo harbor, we have these keys here, uh, but that wouldn't work along the shoreline here because of their height. Um, so we're just going to leave it bare as it is right now. And I think that looks much better than what we had before. Now that we've got that out of the way, we can get back to our airport and some of the other items from the airport's DLC that I think we should include. So on the right hand side where we have our medium and large aircraft stands, just on the other side of the perimeter road where we have our hangars and park planes, we're going to be putting in an aviation fuel station. We're going to be putting in a number of these aviation fuel stations, not just one. I'm sure you've noticed the volume of planes coming and going from the airport. Um, it's, it's actually a surprising amount of planes. I'm sure you've noticed in your own airport if you have one as well. I, I think maybe they overdid it just a little bit on the planes coming and going. Uh, but I think it makes sense for us to have more than just one of these aviation fuel stations to be able to supply aviation fuel for our planes. So I'll start with two that will run parallel lengthwise to the perimeter road. I'm going to put another little side road just on the other side and then have four more running perpendicular to what I already just put in. And if I do it like this, everything kind of lines up nicely and I can put another perimeter road around the outside edge of all these buildings. And instead of six individual aviation fuel stations, now it kind of looks like one large aviation fuel station, which should be more than enough to supply the aviation fuel for the airport that we have because it is it is quite big. Um, and unfortunately, though, I'm, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it last episode, but if I didn't or in case you missed that part, um, these aviation fuel stations, they don't actually do anything. Uh, they are not needed for your airport. Uh, they don't have to be there to supply aviation fuel to your planes. They will come and go from your airport regardless of whether or not you have uh, these aviation fuel stations or not. And well, technically, I guess, taking a look, uh, they do supply an attractiveness of 40 to your airport. So uh, maybe I was being a little bit too harsh. It's, it's not that they don't do anything. It's just that they don't uh, supply any aviation fuel to your planes. And with such a large concentration of flammable fuel, flammable liquid, I think it makes sense for us to take a look at our emergency services, especially the fire, and we can see that we have pretty much no coverage in the area. I, I think um, 
these uh, these buildings act very similar to some of the other DLC buildings where it's it's just the main building that your service vehicles need to attend to. So for example, we have uh, criminal activity at our airport. If uh, a police car were to drive by, it only needs to drive by this main building. It doesn't have to go to any of these individual hangars or anything like that. I'm, I'm not actually sure how it works in terms of the aviation fuel stations because although they're from the airports DLC, they're they're technically separate from like the concourse and, and these aircraft stands and all that other stuff. So I don't know if they can individually catch fire and if the fire trucks have to visit the aviation fuel stations or the main building. Honestly, I'm not I'm not sure. Um, in my testing that I did, my airport did not catch fire luckily. So I'm not really sure how it's gonna work. But I think it makes sense for us anyway to put one in and I'm gonna have it a little bit closer to the aviation fuel stations than the airport. Even though it's not green over here, I, I think it is close enough that if uh, we needed to have a fire truck going to the main terminal over here, we could do that pretty easily. Um, obviously, we can see the high crime rate. I was just talking about that. I think it makes sense for us to put in a police station. I think we should go big though. Instead of just a regular police station, we'll put in a police headquarters. I guess international travelers coming to the city, it makes sense for us to have a, a pretty heavy police presence in the area. So we'll put in a police headquarters just at the intersection right here as we approach the airport. I think that'll work out pretty good. And then also garbage. I'm sure you've saw that flashing here not too long ago. We do have some garbage issues. So we'll go to our garbage and industry menu and we'll put in a waste transfer facility. We're gonna put it off to the side over here. Uh, it does pr produce a little bit of pollution. Honestly, not very much. I think it's 10 or something like that. So hardly even anything. Um, so it's no problem having it kind of off, kind of on its own over at the edge. And it looks like electricity is a problem. And looking at the info view for electricity, it's it's a little bit odd that our hangers don't have any electricity, but they're not complaining about it. I'm, I'm pretty sure hangers in real life have electricity and we do have these lights here. So I think that's maybe a little bit of a bug with our uh, airport buildings, but we'll hook everything up anyway. I'm gonna just roughly put all these power lines in. As we continue to fill out the area, we will uh, make it look a little bit better. But just for now, let's bring it across here. Just for now, we'll get everything hooked up. Like so, and that should be good for everybody, for electricity and utilities. Looks like uh, putting in our waste transfer facility and the police headquarters has helped the issues at our terminal here. So everything's looking pretty good. And as for the right-hand side, there are a couple other things that I'd like to do. So going back to the airports menu, uh, scrolling to the far end, we do have two other buildings. We have the airline headquarters building. We're gonna put that in right here, just off the main road. And then directly across the street, we're gonna have the aviation museum. So put that like that. And then what I'd also like to do is make a crosswalk between the two buildings. So right now we just have this kind of normal two-lane local road. If we were to put a different type of two-lane local road right here, just upgrade that one segment, you can see that the transition between the two-lane local road and the two-lane local road with trees has crosswalks. Um, I don't really like how it lines up, so we'll pause the game and then we'll just redo that. We're gonna go back to the normal two-lane local road and have it run right about there. You can see that the road guideline is right up against the pavement for our airline headquarters. So we'll do that just on the other side as well. And then replace that middle section with the two lane road with trees. And now our crosswalks are kind of lined up with the edges of the airline headquarters. And lastly, on this right hand side, I did spend a little bit of time on trying to get this road to line up with the edge of the hangar. I it maybe seemed a little bit long. It felt like it was a long time, uh, but it was really only a couple minutes. I thought about it afterwards and I thought, well, I could, I could just move the hanger. Instead of getting the road to meet the hanger, get the hanger to meet the road. So it's gonna take me less than 30 seconds just to shift everything over a little bit, get everything lined up. And there we go. 
And I think this right hand side is, is looking pretty good right now. Uh, there isn't really too much left in the airports tab that I want to include in our airport. Uh, obviously hotels and um, where are they? Some of these public transportation options are going to be needed, uh, but that's not going to be on the right hand side over here. We're going to tidy up some of these uh, power lines a little bit. Also plant some trees just between the airport and the train tracks. Uh, but as for buildings, that's going to be it for the right hand side for right now. The left hand side of our airport is going to be a little bit more functional than the right hand side, but instead of buildings from the airport's DLC, we're going to be putting in some buildings from past DLCs that I think make sense to have at our main airport. So just like the right hand side, we're going to have a little side street off of the perimeter road, and then we're going to go down into the emergency services menu at the bottom. Starting in disaster services, we'll put in a disaster response unit. We already have one disaster response unit in the city, uh, all the way across over here. And as I mentioned in my tsunami video, uh, unless your city is getting constantly hit by disasters, you really only need one or maybe two of these disaster response units. Obviously, if, if the disaster is going to be significant enough, you can always put more disaster response units in, just build a whole bunch real quick. Uh, but having one or two just uh, regular gameplay is, is not a bad idea. In the event of, of one of your buildings maybe burning down, if your fire department can't get to it in time, if it does burn down, uh, these disaster response units will send out search and rescue helicopters to those buildings. And then once the building has been searched, you'll be able to rebuild it. So having a second one, uh, one on either side of the city now, I think will provide us pretty good coverage in the event of that happening. We can go through the emergency services menu still at the bottom. So after our disaster response unit, we have our fire department. Uh, we already have lots of these fire helicopter depots. Uh, this is a really good spot for a fire helicopter depot because it's in close proximity to the water. If there is a fire of any kind, it's just a pretty short trip to the ocean over here to pick up some water and then off it goes to wherever it needs to go in the city. We've also got a police helicopter depot that we can put in and then finally a medical helicopter depot as well. So other than these emergency services, uh, there are a couple other kind of air transport, I think the tab is called over here, uh, air transport buildings that we could potentially put in. Uh, we do have a helicopter depot as well as a blimp depot. Uh, so that's a, a public transportation option where you could have a kind of blimp or a helicopter depot spread throughout the city to try and transport people back and forth between places. Uh, and I'm not really sure I want to have that in the city right now as it is. Uh, I feel like I'd have to kind of plan out where I want to have those ahead of time and I, I didn't really plan on having any of them at all. Um, so I think for now I'm going to not put that in. Maybe in a future episode there's going to be lots of room if we need to add one of those uh, blimp or helicopter depots in here. It's going to be pretty easy. Uh, but for now we're just going to leave it uh, to these emergency service helicopter depots and uh, see how it goes from there. Uh, a couple other things that I'd like to put in though, uh, I'm just going to put another little side street here, kind of randomly off to the side, add a little curve to it. Well, I'm not sure I like that curve, let's, uh, let's do that a little bit differently. There we go. Little curve up at the side over here where we have our first disaster response unit, we do have a deep space radar. So I'm going to move that from the far side of the city and put it right here just along the curve, kind of uh, make it a little bit different. So all these buildings are kind of square up to the streets that are through the area. So this um, deep space radar will be on the corner there just to make it look a little bit different. And then we've also got over here, I'm just I'm basically stealing all the good stuff from this side of the city. Uh, we have the weather radar. I think it makes sense for us to have our weather radar at the airport. So I'm just gonna put it in right at the end of this street. And that should be pretty good. Uh, looks like we have to get our utilities hooked up for these helicopter depots and the deep space radar. So we'll do that. The left hand side is pretty much done now in terms of buildings that I'd like to put in. Uh, just like the right hand side, there is some decorating that I'd like to do. Uh, but in terms of, of major buildings, I think this will be it for now. The middle of our airport is going to have a combination of buildings from the airport's DLC and also buildings from previous DLCs that I think fit the area. 
For us to be able to do that, we're gonna be putting in some districts around the main terminal. We've obviously already got the airport district that covers the entire area, but we can put in some of these generic districts within the airport district and it's not gonna cause any interference. The districts that we're gonna be painting in are gonna be within each of these little segments that are around the main terminal. Unfortunately though, painting in small districts beside other small districts um, can be a little bit tricky. I find the game tends to not really like it when you do that, it, it really wants to combine everything together. So we're gonna paint these three with the small brush and then we're gonna to switch to the medium brush for the outside edge. And when I was doing some testing, I found that uh, the game really wanted to combine uh, the districts together on the outside edge. So I found that painting it with the medium brush and then going back with the small brush and reducing the size uh, worked out pretty well. So it's not gonna look the best, but it's gonna get us to where we need to be. Uh, we do have now five districts around the main terminal. And now that we have these five districts, we're gonna go into the commercial specializations tab. We have our tourism specialization, which will provide hotel accommodations and restaurants, as well as our leisure specialization uh, that provides a more vibrant nightlife and many options for daytime relaxation. So I think having those close to our airport for tourists that are coming into the city uh, kind of makes sense. So it kind of offset everything. I think having uh, the tourism specialization for the hotels and the restaurants closer to the terminal makes sense. So we'll put that in there and then we'll switch it up to the leisure and then back to tourism on this uh, far side here. And then on this close side, we'll kind of do the opposite. So we started with the tourism and we'll go to tourism again and then have leisure on the outside edge. So obviously I, I could have combined some of these districts together. These two are the same and it looks like uh, these two are the same, uh, but that may have been a little bit more tricky. Uh, these ones probably not so bad, but these ones for sure, it's just easier to have everything split up. Now, as for the districts themselves, having so many districts kind of close together, we have all these icons and all these titles, it kind of makes it look a little bit messy. So going into some of these districts, uh, we can go into the policies. I'm gonna remove a lot of these policies. I'm gonna remove all of them actually. We, we really don't need most of them. You know, algae-based water filtering, uh, we don't need that for our tourism district. Uh, education boost, recycling, let's just take all of this out. Uh, we'll take industry 4.0, dolphin safe fishing, not needed, really not needed. So by doing that, we, we definitely reduce the number of icons. We still have this title here. So if we go back and we just delete that title and put a space and hit enter, that will remove the title completely. And all we have is this little icon here uh, left over. So it kind of hides everything a little bit better. And I think it's gonna look a lot better having all these icons and titles gone. Now that we've got that out of the way and before we start zoning, uh, we're gonna put in some of the airport DLC buildings. And so we'll go back into the menu down at the bottom here. Uh, the buildings that I'm gonna wanna put in here are the hotels. So we have our budget airport hotels as well as our luxury airport hotels. So we're not gonna put in too many of these hotels, especially the luxury airport hotel, it's, it's quite big. Uh, I think just one is gonna be enough. So we'll have that one luxury airport hotel in, and then we're also gonna put in a couple of these budget hotels. Uh, so let's put in one here, one here, and one just kind of around the curve right here. And I think from there, we're just gonna zone the rest. Um, so it doesn't matter what type of zone we put. So it could be either low density commercial or high density commercial. It doesn't matter which one you put because we have the tourism and leisure specialization. We're just gonna get whatever buildings are associated with that regardless of either low or high density commercial building. So it shouldn't take us too long for that to level up. Um, these buildings, because they are a specialization of the zoning, they don't have the same leveling as regular commercial buildings. I think, well, let's take a look actually. Uh, regular commercial buildings, let's see, let's find one over here. Uh, we got one just on this edge here. Uh, these have three levels. Uh, the specialization commercial buildings don't have any levels. So as long as we've got it in, it's gonna level up as much as it can, uh, basically right away. 
After that, in this middle part, uh, a couple other city services we should just take a look at. Uh, medical, I think we should put in some medical coverage. Uh, so right beside our fire department, we have just a, a medical clinic. And then death care. I, I don't think we need any death care at the airport. I've been looking at the icons that are popping up here and, and more often than not, it's crime and garbage. Uh, so despite having a waste transfer facility and a police headquarters very close, uh, we seem to be having some issues with those. I haven't seen anything about having to pick up any deceased citizens. Um, so until I see that, I'm not going to be putting in a crematorium or a cemetery or anything like that. The tourism slash leisure hub around our airport terminal is now complete. Uh, unfortunately, I'm sure you may have noticed during the time lapse the horrendous traffic that has started to develop coming and going from our airport. And the reason for that is it's been quite some time since I did any traffic management or public transportation updates to the city. Uh, long enough that we've expanded quite a bit since the last time and we're starting to see some compounding effects of uh, poor management of traffic. I'm going to be dedicating next episode to resolving all of that, so we're just going to have to leave it now as it is. We're having some issues with these buildings with not enough customers, um, but I assure you, uh, next episode when we fix everything, it should make everything a little bit better. So in preparation for next episode, there's, there's one other building that we should be adding to our airport. So if we go back into our airport area menu, about uh, two thirds, three quarters of the way down, we have a couple options for public transportation. And out of these options, we're gonna be picking the elevated airport metro station. Uh, this elevated airport metro station hooks up to our concourse. So we're gonna remove this uh, airport lounge right here and then have our elevated airport metro station instead. Uh, so from here, we're gonna go to an elevated metro track and it's going to run parallel to this elevated road that we have going to our upper terminal. We're just going to have it curve around and attach to the metro station. And then it's going to follow the road a little bit further towards the ground. Like so, and then it's going to go underground from here. And like I said, though, that'll be next episode and we're going to resolve the traffic. OK, that's maybe a little bit of uh, wishful thinking. We're going to improve the traffic uh, compared to what we have right now. It's going to make a significant difference, kind of getting everything all tied back together and making sure the traffic in the city is flowing nicely. There are a couple other decorative items that I'd like to add to our airport. Uh, first thing being a perimeter fence. You may already see it in the shot right now. I, I did go ahead and do that off camera. I considered putting in a time lapse showing me putting it in, uh, but I found that I was, I was moving around just a little bit too much. So speeding it up and having it in a time lapse, I was zipping around quite a bit and it really wasn't very fun to watch. It's literally nothing very special. It's just a perimeter fence that goes around the outside edge of our airport. Um, so we have one just kind of on the left hand side. It ends over here near the metro tracks and then another fence on the right hand side starting at this airline lounge right here and going around to the right. Uh, so the middle part of our airport where our leisure slash tourism hub is, it's, it's more of a public access part of the airport. So there isn't really much of a fence going around this section right here. After that, I went ahead and tidied up the power lines going through the airport. Uh, previously, it was coming down from uh, the transport hub across the tracks over here, but now I have it coming from the right hand side uh, from this power line that's going towards our cargo hub. And I've also tidied up and shortened the amount of power lines in some of the other areas. Uh, ideally, I'd have no power lines at all, but because the airport is so big and everything spread out, I kind of have to have some power lines. So it, it is what it is. And lastly, the, the last decorative thing that I'd like to add is some trees. We do have a bit of a gap in between the train tracks and the airport itself. I'm, I'm not planning on putting much of anything here. I don't think any residential housing or commercial buildings would, would really fit. Um, so I'm just going to cover the area in some trees. And again, not really something that's quite entertaining to watch. I will do a little bit of a time lapse showing me putting in these trees, uh, but I'm not really going to dedicate too much time um, to putting those in and showing everybody 
Just a few final thoughts about our city. As part of the airline headquarters building, we get to pick a color, logo, and name for an airline for the city. And I feel like Lakewood Air would be a little bit too easy and uh, Jester Airlines wouldn't be very good. I don't think I would fly on a plane from a company named Jester Airlines. Uh, so let me know down below in the comments what you think we should name our airline. And if I get a few options, I'll either pick one or put up a poll on the channel to decide. Thank you all very much for watching the episode. Uh, next one, we'll be tackling the traffic issues in the city. So if you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing if you haven't already for some more City Skylines content in the future. And I'll see everyone in the next episode.